Welcome in, welcome in, my people. Welcome in, welcome in. Good evening to you all. Good evening to you all. Welcome in to a nice time together. Thanks for coming in. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello. Good evening to you. Uh, to begin, I want to know your name and what city you are from or located in currently. Go ahead and share your name and your city. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening on all sides, all platforms. Good evening and thank you and welcome to the State of the 60th Annual Report. Go ahead and share your name and your city in the chat and the comments. We want to see where you're from. Welcome, 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 welcome. Oh, yes, bring them in. Ah, oh, yes, from all over the district. I love this. I love this. I love this. <laughs> okay, awesome. Let's begin, shall we? So again, welcome to the State of the 60th Annual Report. Um, we're here to recap the amazing year that we just had. And um, let's jump right into it. I want to share just a housekeeping item that we will have a Q&A portal um, portion at the end of this um, event. So if you have any questions for the assembly member directly, please go ahead and use the Q&A portal on Zoom or if you're on Facebook or uh, YouTube, go ahead and use the comment section, the chat in the comment. We're looking at all chats on all different platforms. So we're going to record your question and make sure the member hears them directly before tonight ends. All right, right, will do. Again, welcome. My name is Daryl Fry, a district representative for Dr. Corey Jackson. And let's begin by introducing the assembly member directly. So our assembly member, Corey Jackson, is um, was elected last year to the California State Assembly to represent us all together here in the 6th Assembly District. Assembly member Jackson served on the Riverside County Board of Education in 2020 and represented portions of the cities of Riverside, Myrna Valley, Harris, and the unincorporated community of Mead Valley. Hello. He also served as the founder and CEO of SBX, also known as Sigma Beta Xi, Youth and Family Services, whose mission is to break the cycle of poverty and violence through mentoring, education, and community organizing. Busy, busy, busy. Dr. Jackson graduated from Cal State San Bernardino, where he received his degree in political science and California Baptist University, where he received both his master's and doctorate and social work. So without further ado, please help me welcome our assembly member representing the 60th Assembly District to our to our stage, to the setup here virtually, and we'll take it away from her. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. It is my honor to be with you. You have uh, met my hype man, Daryl Fry, uh, who is staffing um, on this time. And uh, I am simply here to give uh, my annual um, report to you. Um, and I will be doing this annually because I work for you. Um, and it is my goal to make sure that every day that I work as hard as I can to fix the issues of the day, to making sure that none of us just survive, but we all have an opportunity uh, to thrive. So, day, so today, this evening, I'll be going over some important information um, about uh, what I have done uh, this year um, and be able to take your questions um, on any particular issue that you may have uh, so that uh, you know and give me a greater sense um, of what I should be working on in Sacramento um, on your behalf. Um, it is indeed an honor uh, to serve you it's an honor to represent you, and I do not take this lightly. Um, this is um, one of these opportunities where um, I get to continue to serve uh, the community that I have uh, lived in um, for the last 15 years. Um, and um, every time I go to Sacramento, um, I make sure uh, that I carry your voices with me. Um, as we address some of the many crises that California has um, today. So I have a uh, brief presentation uh, to share with you all. Um, and then after that, I'll be happy to take um, any of your questions um, as well. Uh, so I'm going to uh, share my screen.
And again, um, I'm going to start off with uh, the committees uh, that I have sat on. Um, and uh, there has been a few changes since we have a new speaker of the assembly. Uh, but I have spent the majority of this past year chairing the Human Services Committee, uh, which is in charge of all the social safety net programs. So that's CalWORKS, that's CalFresh, uh, that is SSI and SSP. Those are the programs that are serving the disability community. Um, the programs that are serving um, our seniors, um, also our foster care system. All of these things uh, fall within my purview. Um, and it is my number one goal that we turn our survival programs into thriving programs. Uh, we have got to meet the moment of making sure that nobody, uh, particularly no child and no senior is living um, in poverty. I am fortunate enough to also sit on the budget committee uh, where uh, it's, of course, the most important committee to be able to sit on uh, because it deals with how our state functions every every day um, and the type of investments that we make, the type of priorities that we have. I also sit on the Business and Professions Committee, which also which is the committee that regulates um, all of the people. Um, if you have a state license of any kind, uh, the Business and Professions uh, Committee is the one in charge um, of regulating uh, those licenses. I also sit on the Jobs and Economic Development and Economy Committee um, and the Transportation Committee um, as well. I also chair because of my work and so, uh, my focus on social work. Um, and as a social worker, I felt it was important to chair to create a select committee on California's mental health crisis. Uh, we, are, we know we're in a crisis, particularly amongst our children. Um, and we have got to meet the moment. We have too many people taking their own lives. We have too many people suffering every day uh, when there is help available. Uh, we have too many of our friends and families and neighbors uh, suffering. Uh, too many um, of our friends, family, and neighbors, including myself, having family, uh, being homeless due to uh, mental illness. Um, and so uh, we need to meet this moment. We have to get healthier as a community uh, so that we can thrive uh, together. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to get two, four bills signed uh, by the governor. Um, my first bill, um, it was AB 1078, uh, which, was the, which is the bill uh, to stop the banning of books. Um, in schools. As you know, not in our district, in the 60th Assembly District, but certainly in communities around us, uh, we have seen, uh, unfortunately, uh, books being banned um, uh, uh, for various reasons, and we need to make sure uh, that we stop that practice. Um, I found out that counties all over the state were um, having children sleep in office spaces foster care children, sleeping in office spaces and detention centers. Um, and so I authored the bill to increase penalties uh, for counties uh, to making sure that we stop that practice. And AB 426 was signed uh, into law. AB 994 uh, was to making sure that we uh, protect people's privacy um, and making sure that law enforcement does not post um, people's pictures on social media um, unless they have actually been committed, uh, uh, they have actually committed um, a violent crime uh, to making sure that, uh, remember, we have a system that says you are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, therefore, we need to make sure that people's careers and lives and relationships are not destroyed until it has absolutely been proven that they have broken the law. Um, AB 443 also makes sure that we have a definition of what bias actually means. What is the definition of bias? Uh, because based upon that definition, we will know whether um, our peace officers um, are um, engaging in acts of bias. 
uh, while they are doing uh, their job. Um, and so uh, very happy to re to have got these four bills. These are the first four bills that I was I had been able to get signed into law. And those AB 1078, as soon as the governor signed it, has already been law. Uh, but the last three bills will become law starting uh, January uh, 1st. Um, we already talked about some of these bills. Um, AB 1078 had the pleasure of talking and working with the governor directly on it. Um, and that was our picture together. And for those of you who go, if you go to my social media, you'll see the video that myself and the governor did together. Uh, we were the first um, state in the nation uh, to enact a law to stop the banning of books here in California in our schools. Talked about the foster care protection, uh, making sure uh, that we treat our foster care children uh, with the dignity and humanity that they deserve. They have been through so much already. We have got to make sure that we set them up for success. AB 994 in terms of social media. And then of course, uh, put peace officer bias conduct. Uh, we got a couple of state budget wins. Uh, we have been able to um, secure millions of dollars uh, for our district, um, whether they be direct ask from myself, giving to specific nonprofit organizations and government entities uh, such as the City of Marina Valley, City of Paris, California, I mean, the Inland Empire Community Foundation, um, as well as uh, the uh, SoCal Railway uh, Museum also. Uh, we have not been investing in our communities enough. Um, the state has not been investing in our communities enough, and it is my job to bring as much money home as possible to increase our quality of life. Um, I have a top-notch um, district office staff who works for you. Um, and they have been able to put on uh, 16 events this year, um, which includes listening sessions. Um, you all have received or in, if you put, make sure you sign up to our e newsletters, you will get our Let's Talk schedule uh, where I go to each community, each city within the district to making sure that you have an opportunity to meet me in person, ask me questions, and tell me what your priorities are. I've also um, conducted a series of roundtables uh, to making sure that every community understands that they are heard, that I see you, and that your concerns are important as a community, um, and I will do everything that I can to make sure uh, that you as a community, whether you're a part of the LGBTQ community, the Latino community, the Asian Pacific Islander community, the veterans community, the African American community, uh, whatever community you may participate in, um, or you belong to, um, I need you to know that I see you. Um, I need you to know that I care about you. And I need you to know that if you identify a problem, um, I will not rest until I find ways to address those issues. Um, I've held um, a, a, a webinar for nonprofits in our community to making sure that we build up our nonprofit infrastructure uh, to make sure that our communities are more resilient, that we have as many different high quality programs uh, for our friends and our family members, whether they're children, whether they're seniors, uh, uh, whether uh, you are um, a single mother, whether you are uh, you know, someone who commutes uh, to work, uh, no matter what you are, no matter what you do and the various roles that you play in our community, um, 
we need to make sure that there's programs and services available to you to meet your needs. Um, I held also a senior day resource fair uh, to meet with seniors directly to hear uh, their concerns, uh, making sure that we have high quality, affordable housing for our seniors so that they are not going into uh, a situation where they're homeless. Um, we did a turkey giveaway where we gave over 500 turkeys throughout the district uh, to making sure that nobody is going without during the holidays. Um, and then I also held my State of the Black IE Symposium to ensure that we fully dissect the needs of some of the most marginalized and oppressed populations um, in our community. Uh, I've been through all over the district, trying to connect, trying to learn, uh, trying to uh, make it as easy as possible for you to be able to meet me serve, and so that I can serve you. Um, I have been to the border to making sure that we uh, see what um, is necessary for the state to help to do for those who are crossing the border uh, due to various disasters and various humanitarian crises throughout this world. Um, making sure that I crisscross the district to making sure that every city gets some love and that no city in this district is neglected. Uh, making sure that I uh, uh, participate in as many community events as possible, making sure that I look to assess the infrastructure needs as well. Uh, but this is all about servant leadership. Um, in order to lead, you have to serve first. And it's my goal to be the best servant possible for you. I am so excited. Uh, that for those who have had issues with various state departments, whether there is whether it's the Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV, whether they're foreclosure prevention programs, whether they're consumer complaints or veterans benefits or unemployment and disability insurance, whether it's uh, taxes, whether it's professional conduct or licensing complaints, uh, whether it's Medi-Cal or Covered California, if you have any issue with any state department, you call um, uh, this office because we can personally help you uh, with your issues to get you the answers that you need from the various state departments. And within a year, we have been able to serve over 500 of you in your cases that we have been able to get you answers. Uh, and we are so proud to be able to do so, and we are ready to do more. Please utilize us as much as you can. Um, the next, next talk, I will be back um, in Hemet on December the 19th. It'll be my last uh, Let's Talk community forum. Um, and then in January, we'll come out with the next round of Let's Talks throughout the district. Uh, but I am so um, excited to be joined by Assemblymember Eduardo Garcia, um, who also represents part of Hemet, um, and so that we can be able to answer questions uh, for you all um, and also to hear what we should be focusing on uh, for next year. Uh, so that's just a glimpse of what we have been doing so far. We have been hard at work. Um, I am rolling up my sleeves. I am accepting hard assignments. Um, I am trying to solve the complicated issues of uh, homelessness, solving the issues um, of poverty, um, of housing affordability, um, cost of living, mental health, um, you name it. I am trying to do it. Insurance. Uh, being able to make sure that we have access to affordable insurance, particularly fire um, insurance as well, making sure that we expand affordable child care uh, throughout the district and throughout the state, uh, making sure that our seniors who have uh, who are eligible um, also receive uh, their CalFresh benefits, uh, making sure that we continue to provide incentives and support for people who are going into 
uh, becoming social workers and nurses and doctors and ment and medical professionals um, and others. Um, and then also making sure that we continue to implement the lessons that we've learned uh, since the pandemic. Uh, so um, I'm going to stop there to be able to take your questions. Um, and again, it is such an honor uh, to be with you, such an honor to be able to serve uh, you um, in the State Assembly. And so, uh, Daryl, I will, uh, are there any questions uh, so far? Yeah, we have a couple of questions coming in. And again, if you want to ask a question directly to our assembly member, um, this is your opportunity to do so. Go ahead and use the Q&A portal um, option on your Zoom, and then go ahead and use the comment section for if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Dr. Jackson, um, quick question for you. It says, it has been reported that the state of California's budget will be in a $68 billion deficit next year. Should we be worried that critical services will be cut? Again, it has been reported that the state budget will be in a $68 billion deficit next year. Should we be worried that critical service will be cut? Yes, uh, we have as now a chair of a uh, one of the budget subcommittees, I have been updated on the state budget um, and um, the money that has come in uh, uh, during our tax season. And uh, you're right, uh, we have for this year uh, that the money we were thinking were go was going to come in has come over about $25 billion, $26 billion short for this year. And we anticipate another 25 to $26 billion uh, for next year um, as well. The good news, we have a rainy day fund. Uh, that will help us to make sure that we don't cut critical programs for those of us who have survived through the Great Recession. I don't anticipate um, us having the drastic and draconian uh, cuts that we had to do uh, during that time, but there's no, tr no doubt we're going to have to prioritize. Um, we are not going to be able to continue to uh, fund certain things, but in terms of the very things that we need as a society, um, we don't anticipate having to cut education, don't have to anticipate having to cut uh, things like our disability programs, our CalFresh and CalWORKs programs, uh, some of the critical public safety, uh, we don't anticipate having to cut that. But as you know, um, when uh, you get your paycheck and it's a little short. Um, you have to focus on paying your critical bills um, in terms of your rent or your mortgage, uh, your electricity, uh, your gas, um, your car payment um, as well. And you might not be able to pay for HBO. You may not be able to pay for uh, uh, Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus. And I'm just naming all the ones that I have that I shouldn't even be paying for right now. But hey, uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but the idea is this, is that for the first time in a long time, we as legislators have to learn how to prioritize and understand what are uh, priorities uh, versus luxuries. Um, and so we are going to have to make some hard decisions. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, people's critical support uh, we believe we'll be able to protect. Um, and, as, and as soon as we get through um, January, um, I'll provide another opportunity to give an update on the state budget as well um, in case anything changes. And Dr. Jackson, you talked about priorities and housing being, being a part of the priorities. Another question coming in, this says, what are some of the housing um, policies coming through and uh, policies focused on combating homeless, homelessness in our region? Again, what are the policies in regards to housing coming down or um, looking to combat homelessness in our region? Absolutely. Uh, we continue to invest billions of dollars into making sure that there's programs to number one, um, increase our housing stock of all kinds. That means affordable housing, that means middle-class housing. That also means making sure that there's beds available for transitional housing. Um, we are continuing to invest to making sure that we continue to um, provide as many different housing options 
um, as possible. Um, and as we continue to expand those opportunities um, and continue to invest in those, uh, certainly we will continue to uh, make sure uh, that continues to be a priority. Uh, we are making progress, um, but the problem is, is that once we're able to house people, we're having a hard time keeping them housed. Um, and so for any given reason, they might be choosing to leave that housing. Um, and so that means that we have to double down in our investments for all the wraparound supports, uh, the addiction support, the mental health support, uh, the job search and training support, um, you know, all the different things to making sure we get people out of crisis mode so that we can start getting them into a thriving mode. This is a very complicated issue, uh, but I guarantee you we are uh, hard at work at finding different ways to make sure that this happens. I'm loving the commitment there because housing is an issue. Uh, on another issue, um, when it comes to care court, though it's early in the implementation, uh, Dr. Jackson, what outcomes are you seeing on care court around the state? Again, what outcomes are you looking to see foreseeing uh, around the state of California? Uh, well, you know, when we talk about care court, we have to understand uh, that number one, you're right. We are just now beginning the uh, rollout of the counties who have signed up to be start their care course. We have not seen data yet um, on that. Uh, but as a social worker, I am going to be looking very hard at Cal, uh, care court uh, to making sure uh, that people are not being misused, people are not being abused, and the process is not being abused. Uh, but at the same time, for those who are in such a mental health state, uh, that they can no longer um, discern what reality is or be able to make decisions for themselves uh, without some type of intervention, including my own brother who is somewhere in the Inland Empire on the streets, uh, that uh, there's not a day that goes by that when I'm driving, I find myself looking around to see if I can see him. Uh, but the idea is this, is that the status quo was not acceptable. Um, and uh, But at the same time, as we are trying this new innovation, uh, we can't just allow it to go and not pay attention to it. We have to keep a close eye to it because these are people's lives at stake. And we want to make sure that this is a this becomes an opportunity to help people to be able to get into a state of consciousness where they can make their own healthy decisions and not an opportunity or not a system in which actually hurts people like we've seen um, in the past uh, with other uh, mental health programs that uh, this nation has been involved in. Um, but just know uh, that um, I'm on top of it um, and I will continue to be so um, as we begin to start seeing some data come our way. Thank you, I love that. Uh, there's a couple folks who want to mobilize and get a part of just being more involved civically. Uh, what kinds of civic involvement should we be involved in, they ask, to help support your efforts and ensure the legislation you get passed actually gets effectively implemented everywhere? So again, what kind of civic involvement should we um, be involved in and how can they support the legislative process um, to get the bills actually implemented after getting passed? You know, the best thing you can do, a few things. Number one, to attend or watch your city council and school board meetings. That is so important so you can see who is representing you and uh, the decisions uh, that they're making and the way uh, they conduct themselves. Uh, secondly, I would say that uh, join community organizations uh, to be able to collectively um, use our gifts and our talents um, and our uh, and our hands to be able to serve um, our friends and families and our neighbors um, so that we can continue to uplift one another and continue to ensure that we all have hope. And then thirdly, of course, is making sure that you vote um, and making sure that you're doing your homework when you vote um, and making sure that you take every office 
that is on the ballot seriously. Um, and not just uh, the ones that are at the top, but all the way down. Uh, because if it's an elected office, that means it the Constitution and we have felt that it's important enough that they have so much power uh, that only the people should be able to put them there. Um, and so uh, get involved, serve, join organizations in the community. Um, and if there aren't any that you like, start with some. Uh, we don't have enough community-based organizations in our district yet to be able to help out with all the needs uh, that the least of us um, are in need of. Dr. Jackson, um, I know, and a couple of people know that you covered east, eastern part of Hemet. We have a question in regards to the city of Hemet. Is there a project to add a local Hemet stop station for the Metro? Um, the person asked this because getting to Paris can be challenging. Again, any projects or any transportation accessibility for our city of Hemet residents? You know, my staff just got an update from the Riverside uh, County uh, Transportation Authority. Um, and um, unfortunately, I don't have anything to report in terms of a stop um, in Hemet. Uh, but uh, one thing is uh, for sure, I think as far as it goes right now, is the city of Paris. Um, and so I know that it's hard. I, um, I, I know that from if I start um, in the city of Riverside and I go all the way to Hemet, it takes close to an hour uh, to get from one part of this district to the next. And we have a lot of infrastructure needs to be able to do that. And I'm actually meeting with the Secretary of Transportation um, in a few weeks and I'll, and I'll even be bringing him into the district so he can see the needs and the transportation needs and the public transportation needs of this district uh, so that we can make sure that uh, we uh, can get to one place or another um, as well, especially if you do not have a vehicle. Uh, the good news is for the you gamblers um, is that, uh, and for you Vegas people, um, is that the state of California actually was able to secure $3 billion uh, to create a bullet train uh, from the Inland Empire to Las Vegas that will be able to get you there within two hours. Um, and so stay tuned on that uh, because um, uh, we're starting to see some progress, but we still have a ways to go. I want to share a comment and then the question from the same resident. Um, he comments, he says, thank you for your servant and community integrated style of leadership. It is refreshing. And he follows that with a question. Um, what, if anything, is being done to prevent corporations from mass buying neighborhoods and communities in our state? Again, what is being done to prevent corporations from mass buying neighborhoods in our in our? We saw that a lot during the Great Recession. Um, where uh, many, many houses, blocks of houses were being bought uh, by, uh, uh, by corporations and then renting them out or allowing the property to uh, uh, start going down in terms of quality. Um, and we are, uh, we, many of us have actually talked about that to find out what we can do legally. Because remember, uh, we, we, uh, how do you make sure uh, that we are not also violating the Constitution uh, while we try to make sure uh, that um, our housing stock goes to residents and individuals and families first um, instead of corporations uh, who then are jacking up the prices of our housing? Um, and so we've got to make sure uh, that we um, get a hold of that. I don't have an answer for you right now, um, but certainly my staff has written it down um, and we will be able to look into it more to see what we might be able to do. Noted as well. Dr. Jackson, about the future, 2024 is here, almost a new year. Can you talk to us about your new appointments for next year and maybe your vision policy-wise, legislation-wise um, for us to look forward to for next year? Uh, well, I have uh, been uh, appointed uh, as the chair of the Budget Subcommittee 2 of Human Services. 
uh, which means that before in my previous chairmanship, I was in charge of the policies of our human services uh, infrastructure or systems in California. Um, and now I'll be one of the uh, seven crafters of the state budget every year, um, which means that it gives me more opportunity to make sure that our systems are designed for us to thrive, um, but also that our systems are changing as our society changes and as our needs change um, as well. Um, and so as a trained social worker, this is a dream come true. Um, this is my specialty. Um, and um, I look forward to the enormous challenge that it is uh, to be able to uh, direct the human services of the fifth largest economy um, in this world. Um, number one issue um, is going to be childhood poverty. Um, unfortunately, the federal government did not renew the child tax credit, uh, which means that um, childhood poverty has, has at least doubled in California um, and in this district. And we have got to make sure that no child is growing up in poverty and no child is growing up homeless. We have got to do that. And then secondly, We've got to make sure that that's happening for our seniors as well. Uh, the test of any society um, is how we treat our children and how we treat our elders. And if we can't get those two right, uh, we are not doing our job as a state. And then making sure that you know uh, and that you feel that you are living in a safe community um, as well. I think between those those three things, that's going to be the highlight of what I'm trying to do. I'm also going to be making changes to the foster care uh, system uh, to making sure that we're treating our foster care children like our very own children. We are doing a horrible job um, in terms of um, uh, the quality of service that we're doing, giving to our foster care children. Um, and it is a a, a moral imperative that we get that right. Um, and I think uh, lastly, um, of course, addressing overall cost of living uh, to making sure that none of us are in survival mode. We deserve to thrive. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that we do have those key components in place for us to thrive. Awesome. Dr. Jackson, one more question, then we'll open up for your closing remarks. Um, we definitely appreciate your time with us and just being very present with us. Uh, for our unincorporated communities, a question comes through. Um, what are the plans for the unincorporated town of New Evo? How can you help us? A resident asked from the city of, or the unincorporated space of New Evo. Actually, the, I'm, I'm excited because um, New Evo is my next stop. Uh, starting in January, to be able to come and meet with you all personally, to fully understand uh, your needs in Nuevo, um, and to making sure that um, I uh, work with um, your county leadership as well, uh, so that uh, you can have the quality of life that you deserve um, as well. Uh, we know that uh, you live in Nuevo because there's something unique about Nuevo. Um, and um, I'm sure that you there's some things that you want to preserve, but also some things you uh, might see you're in need of. Um, and it is my job to make sure that I hear you clearly um, and that I identify some key issues for me to work on uh, and then report back to you um, on, on how to get that done. Haven't forgotten about you. I've been into I've been into Mead Valley. I've been to Good Hope. Um, I will be to uh, Roma Land. Um, I'll be going to uh, Lakeview. I'll be going to East Hammett as well. Uh, but Nuevo is one of my next stops. We appreciate you. Again, the comments and sharing the remarks as well uh, from uh, residents as well. First of all, thank you, Assembly Member, for all your hard work in the district. Um, so just some love from the community to you, Dr. Jackson. Uh, any closing remarks as we exit and kind of just uh, lean on to the rest of this month? Uh, folks, I need you to know something. 
I need you to know that from a young age, I found out quickly uh, that I'm not happy, happy unless I'm serving. Um, and it is, uh, I am in a dream job to be able to serve you. Uh, and it is not an honor for you to meet or talk with me. It's an honor for me to work for you. Uh, and I take it seriously um, because we owe the next generation a better society, better opportunities, um, and um, better access to human and civil rights uh, than what we had. And right now, the data is not looking too good. And so we have got to double down. And so I'm, ro ro I'm rolling up my sleeves. Uh, to making sure that I'm working as hard as I can and as thoughtfully as I can uh, to making sure uh, that I'm serving, giving you the best quality ser quality service uh, possible. I thank you for being with me. Hopefully, many of you have received, if, you're, uh, if you live in the uh, district, many of you may have already received uh, my annual report uh, in writing. Um, and if you haven't, you can stop by the office and we can give you a copy as well. Uh, thank you all very much uh, for uh, participating. Um, it is my honor to be at your service, and I look forward to uh, meeting you uh, soon um, as well. Thank you all very much for being here. Have a good night.